In this video, I'll be doing a review of Ubuntu GNOME 13.10. So Ubuntu GNOME is a remix of Ubuntu, and it's absolutely ideal if you would like the GNOME desktop. It currently comes with GNOME 3.8.4, I believe it was, but I think you can upgrade to 3.10 through a PPA, or repository. But I'm taking a look at the stock version here. Now this distro is a good choice if you don't want Unity, because then you can throw all the Unity rubbish out the way there and just have the core GNOME system. So it's going to be lighter and you'll have to do fewer updates through the life of the system. That's ideal. But first off, should we watch a movie? I don't really want to watch a movie. You know, it'll be a bit different, won't it? Be a bit different than me yapping on. Anyway, let's just go across to my NAS. I'll just go across here on the SMB. Yep, just take a look in my movies folder. Did you watch Cursed Chucky? It's fairly new out, isn't it? Got a nice HD 1080 version here. And, oh yeah, totem opens, minimise screen. So let's, yep, we'll maximise that. Um, yeah, doesn't look too bad here, does it? Well, let's minimise that and go into the activities menu. Okay, that's a bit weird. It's going a bit red there. Why are they doing that? Okay, um... Now we're trying to open up something else there. And it's just gone all weird there, isn't it, on the font? Hmm. Very strange. And actually that's totally lasting. The only way out of it is to reboot the system. Now look, perhaps I've been totally unfair showing you that, because I stumbled across this bug. I noticed Totem was being a little bit glitchy. So of course when I noticed things like that, I throw everything at it. And I really went for all my videos. And I was just mucking around with how to using the system and I stumbled across it. It works out about three times in six. That won't happen at all. You could do exactly the same as what I did there. Won't do anything. Two times in six, it has a glitch with uh, all the fonts turn into squares. And in one time in six, it does that. Oh, nice. Anyway, let's take a look at the rest of the system. The layout of the desktop has remained fairly similar to before. So you've got the activities launcher in the corner. You've got shortcuts to open a few applications up. You can also switch between the applications here, you can also launch other desktops, and however else you want to use GNOME, because I do still find it quite a confusing desktop to use. Anyway, I'll switch back to that uh, workspace, desktop, yeah, whatever you call it. You've got no minimize on the Windows, I notice that GNOME still stubbornly refused to put that in. I'm sure you can add it on later though, through some of the tweak tools. You've got a time and calendar in the middle. On the right hand side we have this keyboard selector. This is a new feature that's appeared on all the Ubuntu 13.10s that I've seen so far. Although the GNOME one seems to bring up slightly different settings. Can we disable it through here? Um, I haven't actually looked at how you would disable it on the GNOME desktop. Do you know what? It's not particularly obvious how you disable it, so I shall just carry on. Anyway, on, still on the right hand side on the indicators we have the volume and sound settings menu. We've got the network and network settings. And you've got the user menu with the shutdown and also another shortcut to settings. Boy, they don't half like shortcuts to settings there, don't they, under the indicators. Open up brightness and lock, and I'm just going to disable the lock screen. Backgrounds, and the background there. There's not much of a selection of wallpapers. But let's change from the grey one, let's have that one there. Oh, it's gone to a white background. What on earth are you doing? Is the activities menu is correct now and the desktop has not switched. Now I've rebooted, uh, let's carry on with the review. So I'm noticing inconsistency still on the GNOME applications. For example, if I open up Files or Nautilus, we have a lights menu there, and you also got another menu up on the top here. So we've got a dark background on the menu. Now if we're going to open up the Eye of GNOME Picture Viewer, it is a dark background there, with the light grey Ubuntu style menus. Huh. Okay, let's open up Totem. The offending item there. So that's got a dark background, with the Ubuntu ambience coloured menus, although they're not displaying properly there. Any other applications we could open here? Uh, let's try Firefox, let's see what those look like. Actually, let's get rid of Totem, that's getting right in the way there, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. A Firefox has light menus. For LibreOffice Writer, what we've got here? So we've got light background menus on there. 
So yes, uh, across a few different applications we do have some theming issues. So it is a bit messy. I don't really have much more to say about this distro, so I'll just show you what applications we have pre-installed. Now this is a bit messy here on GNOME 3.8, because although we do have some applications grouped together, such as sundries and utilities, that is all that is grouped together. And I noticed this before when I reviewed Ubuntu GNOME 13.04. So just to pick out a few obvious ones, we have Firefox for the web browser, Empathy for Instant Messenger, Partial Install of LibreOffice, a couple of small games with Mahjong, Minds, uh, I should expect Solitaire and Sudoku as well, Synaptic I installed, got transmission, for the torrent transmission for Torrent Client, and Evolution for the Email Client, yeah, we got there in the end. We have Ubuntu Software Center for installing applications. A little bit slower loading on here compared to Ubuntu. Here's what I thought of Ubuntu GNOME 13.10. So the speed has improved and there are fewer noticeable bugs compared to Ubuntu GNOME 13.04. However, the disadvantages are that there's still inconsistent theming across the GNOME applications, particularly on the backgrounds and pop-up menus, where some have like a black pop-up menu, some have a grey, and some have lighter grey. It's just, it's all inconsistent and messy. And there's the same old disadvantage I've been saying for all the Ubuntu distros on 13.10, that they are only supported for nine months, which is until July 2014. However, that does take us through to the next long-term support release of Ubuntu 14.10, which will be released in April 2014. Now, I don't know if Ubuntu GNOME is going to be a long-term support. I'll we'll have to wait and find out. Now, I have mentioned at the bottom there that issue with Totem. However, it's probably not a major issue because it did take me quite a few times to regenerate that bug, and it did only seem to work for HD 1080 videos in .mkv format. So, probably not everyone's going to be doing that. In fact, they mentioned on the community page I was the first one to find it. Hmm. I'll take a bit of pride there. But I did notice Totem being a bit glitchy, so once I noticed that, like, I threw every video at it and just really tried to break it, and in the end I did. So overall, I have given this distro 68%. It's still not brilliant, however, it is an improvement on 13.04, so if you are using Ubuntu GNOME 1304, I would actually recommend you upgrade it. Upgrade. But would I use this distro? No. It's the issue with GNOME 3, it's still messy and inconsistent, I just don't like it. It doesn't flow well for me, so that's why I would not use it. I prefer Unity because actually it does seem to flow a whole lot better there. So thanks for watching. See you all later.